Namco. Namco. Yes, Namco. Throughout the 70s, 80s and a chunk of the 90s, they were king of the arcade. With classics we all recognise like Pac-Man, Galaga, Dig Dug, Pole Position, and up to more modern titles like the Tekken and Time Crisis series. But not just arcade, home consoles too of course. Many games released on many different systems throughout the years. But out of all their recognisable titles, there are many that were less famous. And this being PS exploitation of course, we're going to take a look at one of those. It's 2003, the PlayStation 2 is reigning supreme, and in a post 9-11 world, playing the lone American hero fighting a terrorist faction is the current video game trend. Proclaimed to be the first game to have a cover system as its main mechanic, Kill Switch, Kill Dot Switch, okay, came along before your modern fancy schmancy Gears of War or Vanquish. Initiating data stream. Kill Switch has you controlling a super soldier named Bishop. Or should I say, you're controlling someone controlling a super soldier named Bishop. Bishop is being sent on a selection of missions via a prototype technology which allows a user to remotely control a soldier. The tech you'll be using on the field is a prototype, if you can handle it, and by that I mean control it. Controlling the controls is a controller named Controller. That explains the complicated setup. Working for our main protagonist, Archer. The rules of the game are gonna change. He's using this technology to instigate a war in which to sell and profit from this technology. This story is very piecemeal with no indication of what's happening at the start. Who's that lady? What's that thing? You're only human. Is that him talking? Why do you need me then? You're gonna utilize your talent in an entirely different manner than you were expecting. Who are these guys? When starting a new game, you enter the mandatory training mission. Yes, mandatory. No straight to the campaign for you, you uneducated pleb. Ah, oh, the crap widescreen. Well, no biscuit for you, kill switch. You learn the usual basics of ducking behind the myriad of the game's conveniently placed waist-high walls, firing from around corners, grenade throwing, sniping. And this is the only instance I've come across where a game actually teaches you the delicate art of circle strafing. One mechanic this game has a rather misguided attitude towards is blind fire. This is where you just shoot the enemy without emerging from cover. Kill Switch treats this as a positive feature. There's even a blurb on the rear of the box. Blind fire, lay down suppressing fire without even looking. And by that they mean, blind fire, shoot spastically in mad desperation, miss everyone and die anyway. Even when the enemies pull the classic mistake of piling through a doorway one by one, they're still hard to hit. I found no use for it. The game is quite short. There are only five missions divided into a few sections. And Namco wanted to make the locations as varied as possible. The Middle East, an oil rig, North Korea, an ancient temple, and Archer's base. The first mission in the Middle East still feels like a training mission as it's very straightforward. Something I noticed in the first mission that made the gameplay a tad frustrating was when pressing L1 to take cover you had to rotate the camera roughly perpendicular to the surface you wanted to adhere to, but in all the later stages Bishop will thankfully do it regardless of angle. Did they only notice this mistake after the first mission, fixed it later and thought, shall we go back and fix the first one? Nah, sod that. The level design for each main stage is pretty basic with a straightforward run, cover, shoot. Two glaringly obvious comparisons I immediately noticed were styles borrowed, shall we say, from two franchises still fresh in people's minds in the early 2000s. Do these look familiar? An apt title would be The Matrix Gear Solid. Snake, uh, Bishop, you're heading for a lawsuit. Tone it down a little, will you? As Bishop is being puppeted through the game, an outsider known as Duchess is following his movements whilst trying to hack the connection and free him of the controller. Program still running. Good. Let's try something different this time. Trying to bring his humanity back with an intermittent vision of that lady from the early Heavy Rain tech demo. This conflict between Archer's controller and Duchess, along with this reoccurring memory, is how the already evasive story unfolds. But once she succeeds, taking out Archer becomes the new objective. Ah, son of a bitch! Towards the end is when the difficulty really ramps up. Keep looting them bodies for ammo and find as much health as possible. You see that? Just to add to the game's already unsubtle approach, other protagonists such as Max Payne, yeah I'm actually calling Max Payne subtle, will open the medicine cabinet and take out the contents. Not Bishop, no no, he takes the entire cabinet. <laughs> Along with the difficulty increase, so it seems does the graphical detail. It's very apparent when storming Archer's base. Does this coincide with the aforementioned first mission cover problem? 
the development quality of the game seems to improve as you play. You don't really see third-person shooters in arcades, but if there was one, I think Kill Switch would be a good candidate. It's a basic no-frills shooter on the surface, with a what-was-new-at-the-time cover system. Being Namco, it's quite reminiscent of Time Crisis with elements of other third-person games, like the ones that appear on the demo disc included. A video preview of Siphon Filter the Omega Strain, a playable demo of SOCOM US Navy Sewers 2, and a playable demo of... Kill Switch. Yes, Kill Switch comes with a playable demo of itself. Just in case you need a little more kill switching with your switch killing. This was a simple game with a simple story, yet it was satisfying nonetheless. I personally prefer playing shooters with keyboard and mouse controls, as I find aiming with an analogue stick rather inaccurate. But Kill Switch had a good balance. I was shooting enemies fine without the ineptitude of a stormtrooper. It's nothing special, but it focuses on what it wants to be, and it does it well. A forgettable game? Certainly. But it didn't fall into obscurity without a satisfying fight.